Well, certainly, I am convinced that the two are not mutually exclusive. That indeed, we have actually also been looking at the meaning of the phrase, do or die. I believe that President Mahama spoke in a certain context. And what he said was that, in 2024, the election would be won at the polling station where nobody would be allowed to play any tricks, take advantage of anybody, or even carry out any unnecessary uh, rigging of the election results and its outcome. I'm sure we all heard him, and we all heard the context in which he spoke. And I believe that all it says is that it appears he described a situation in which one must take a very big risk in order to avoid failure. It is also that one will make every effort to achieve a goal or basically fail making the effort. I'm sure he was just reiterating something that everybody in and around us has actually taken very, very seriously. We've all heard not just words, but rumors about all the rigging machinery, the rigging strategies, the necessary, unnecessary pandering with election results. We heard about even parliamentary results and how people actually took advantage of parliamentary candidates and declaration of results. We know what happened in Teshima South. And indeed, President Mahama had actually just visited the family of the people who lost loved ones in the last election. It is a matter that should never happen again. I'm sure you do know that some of the persons who were maimed and hurt are actually in court right now suing the Republic of Ghana. You also know that two of our members of parliament have actually petitioned the Commissioner of the uh, Human Rights and Administration of Justice seeking remedies, ensuring that these things never happen again, that nobody should actually lose their life or limb simply because they went out there to exercise a civil right. So you do not agree with Mr. Franklin Kujo? Because you said no, that... certainly not. And I'm not seeking any equalization here. I am sure that President Mahama spoke within a certain context and I believe that when you listen to the full context, he explained exactly what he meant. Hmm. Uh, but beyond that, th there are a couple of questions that come up. You talk about the 2020 elections and some of the shortfalls in, in, this, in the elections. Former President Mahama is actually proposing in that video that results will be protected around every polling station in this country. Is that realistic? Can that be done? Oh, well, certainly. Why ever not? Well, under the circumstances, if you do not do that, then how would you get a democratic outcome? It is exactly the circumstances that we are confronted with. When you have government sending uh, military, sending... Uh, National security, we saw what happened in Ayawa West when persons who are unarmed are shot at, disrupting everything, causing mayhem, leading to the loss of life. You know that one of the persons who lost their life was actually a young boy who was 18. What wrong would this person have committed? You know, it is almost as if the same purveyor of democracy who have now benefited from this democracy that we are all enjoying, feel that nobody else should benefit from the same democratic dispensation. What happened to the rule of law? What happened actually to all of the slogans that we heard about what it was like to defend the Constitution and to protect the Constitution and to ensure that the Constitution was actually respected and all of that? I believe strongly that the election that is coming up in 2024 would require a certain vigilance. It would require a certain uh, 
determination, we would have to be intentional about safeguarding the balance of the good people of Ghana. Because I was listening to uh, Mr. Benenson yesterday, and his projection is that it would take 50,000 trusted polling agents across this country, and not to even talk of the people you have to play in, place in collation centers, and if the EC persists with the regional collation centers, the things you have to do, and then the national collation centers, among others. That requires a lot of work, I, I'm guessing, and I, I, and I, I prepared for this work. Well, I believe that if we're not prepared for it, then it means that we know then that our democracy has failed. Which one is the bigger burden? To ensure that we protect our ballot and ensure that we get the right outcomes or we sit and fold our arms and then we allow everybody to run roughshod over us? Which is the better option? Preparation is important. Ensuring that you safeguard our ballot boxes is important. Ensuring that you safeguard the sanctity of the poll and its outcome, even more so. I mean, Senna, where have we ever heard, in any jurisdiction for that matter, where in an election, the opposition party and the ruling government actually have equal numbers in parliament? Do, do you understand? And yet the outcome of the presidential results do not match the parliamentary results. You, you understand? It, 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 it doesn't add up. And it's very rare that these sorts of outcomes are experienced in our side of the world. It is a matter that if, look, in any other jurisdiction, there will be a huge investigation into this matter. But under our circumstances, we have a government led by President Akufuado that is not willing to leverage on anything, not even on our democracy. All they want is power to continue to plunder, to continue to steal our money, to continue to run roughshod over everybody else, to continue to misbehave all over the place. They make no apologies. You understand? And look at the press conference yesterday, where we had the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party telling us that they came to stay in power for 50 years. In what democracy do you stay in power for 50 years? Or the uh, uh, majority leader telling us that uh, if they lose 2024, 20, they'll be in a position for 12 years. How are you able to determine all these things? And on what basis do they make all of these reckless statements and comments? So certainly for the underdog, that is the Opposition National Democratic Congress, it is indeed a matter that we must defend vigorously, that we must actually enjoy our party members to be vigilant, to take this matter as a matter that there is a certain determination, a certain intentional strategy, a certain deliberate strategy to ensure that the necessary outcomes are reached. We cannot have equal numbers in Parliament and not share equally in government and other places. Or so given the given results, that simply did not make sense to anybody in terms of the statistics of it. President Mahama spoke in a certain context. And I believe that we should take the context and accept that he knows exactly what he's talking about and what he's speaking to. And I've seen every effort being made even to define the words or the phrase, uh, do or die and all of that. He spoke within a certain context. In any case, those persons who were shot at and lost their lives, did they go there expecting to be shot at? Did they go there expecting to be maimed and wounded? Certainly not. Hmm. You know the, uh, the former president quite well. A lot of the time when he speaks, he's, he comes across as usually conciliatory. Somebody who watches his language is careful about the kind of things he says, his choice of words. And I recall... Uh, when we were at the symposium, when he was talking about that tweet that was made by Gabi Otri Dakon, dividing the debt of the country at the time when he was president, he said that whatever you say now can be used against you and can come in to haunt you in the future. So I realized he watches his words carefully. Last elections, boot for boots. This time around, do or die. What... What happens, or uh, under what circumstances does the former 
uh, president choose these kinds of words? Well, certainly under circumstances that we all find ourselves in. Circumstances where you know that the sanctity of the votes cast by citizens will not be respected. Where you know that our democracy is being totally disrespected. When you know that all government institutions, even security apparatus, have now become very subjective to the whims and caprices of the new patriotic party and the Akufuado led government, then you do know that you must actually start to think outside the box, that you must be determined, you must be intentional about preserving the sanctity of the vote and, of course, the eventual outcome of the results. Let me read a message to you. Uh, this is from Kojo Fiagbe. Sesena, ask Madam Joyce if we should trust President Mahama because he promised us boot for boot and later changed his position. Did his position ever change on that issue? Well, you know that his position never changed. But you know that Mahama will be the last person to call for people to go and, uh, uh, you know, sacrifice their lives in exchange for an election result. You understand? He chose the path of democracy. He went to the Supreme Court and he filed a petition before the Supreme Court. Whatever happened in the Supreme Court is a matter of public record. But look, we will have to ask the New Patriotic Party and the Akufado government in particular to go back and read up on our democracy and on the history of Ghana. There has been no time that Ghana has had a man more democratically inclined than President John Dramani Mahama. And we all know the kind of person that President Mahama is. I believe that we should take his comments within context. The, uh, let me read this. This is from Nana Bribwine, who is the the a deputy general secretary of the of the New Patriotic Party, responding to this comment, says, uh, speaking to Joy News, permit me to use this opportunity to send an advice to the former president of the NDC. Certainly, they cannot intimidate us. Certainly not. Mark my words. Certainly not. We are all prepared to defend and protect the democratic credentials of the countries, of the country. However, if they want to push us to the world to humiliate us, to bully us, that can never be possible. We are not cowards. We are men. Your response? I would return exactly his own uh, terminologies to him. And I would tell him that as the National Democratic Congress, we have also been decided that this time we be determined, that we need to be intentional, that we need to march them with all of the efforts and energies that we have to ensure that this time our ballots are respected and our ballots protected, that we will not allow the guys of a national election security outfit to go out there and threaten, to go out there and deceive, to go out there and disrupt. Because in some cases, people were at the collation centers when they were disrupted and attacked by a bunch of bandits calling themselves security apparatus and operatives. We saw what happened in Tichima South in particular. These things should not happen again. They should never happen again. Absolutely not. So I'll be giving him back his own advice and even telling their general secretary that anybody who says that they come into government to come and rule for 50 years is no democracy. Certainly no democrat. Because the constitution of 1992 allows for terms of four years for each uh, president and gives you a term of two terms after which you hand over to some other person. So if you came into power to rule for 50 years, it means you've actually suspended the democratic terminus that brought you into office. And you cannot be respected or called even a Democrat. Um, I, I realize that one of the things the former president keeps talking about is the economy, of course, is the prevailing matter now. He spoke about it at the, uh, at the University of Ghana. And when you listen to the interview with uh, Akina Radio, uh, he spoke about it. Uh, and I'm guessing it has been part of the conversations he's having with the interest groups he's meeting. Uh, this is uh, the MPP at their press conference yesterday. 
quote, former President Mahama Insetekwe are on public record as being the worst duo to have ever been in charge of the Ghanaian economy at the same time. He put the economy in a free fall after extremely reckless expenditure in excess of some 12 billion in pursuit of election victory in 2020. His economy under Setekwe never recovered, leading to unheard of taxation measures, including putting taxes on condoms and cutlasses. He's questioning the moral right of the former president to comment on the economy. Then, uh, you know, it is very easy for us to speak the way we do. It is very easy for us to counter in a very breathless and disrupted manner. Whoever followed that press conference yesterday would be left in no doubt that these were conversations that were not thought to knee-jerk reactions. Look, they rode into power promising to protect the public first. They rode into power promising to, you know, build a better economy, to create jobs. What are we seeing today? They are literally, literally emptying the public purse into their pockets. You understand? I have not seen any reparations that have been made beyond the sloganeering. Look at the circumstances. I mean, you know, we don't want to speak economics as in terms of statistics and numbers. But then, are you living in Ghana? Have you looked at the cost of living in this lately? Have you looked at the cost of basic amenities such as food? You, you understand? These are realities that we all face. And persons who lived under President Mahama's administration are still here in Ghana. So we don't even need any conversations from the new patriotic party or his general secretary to come up and tell us just what the real situation is. Apart from enriching themselves and making their own lives better, what have they really done in terms of interventions to help the good people of Ghana? Look at the uh, conversations that Mr. Tepe had with us in terms of the ESLA. That was the energy sector levy. It was actually set up so that we could clear the legacy debt in terms of the energy sector to free up the sector for better uh, interventions for the good people of Ghana. Look at the sinking fund that was put up. Look at even the legacy fund that was set up. Because that was actually a fund that was going to be used eventually to support free education. Look at the Ghana infrastructure fund. This is going cross check. The amount that accrued into all of these funds when the NDC left office and how the said funds were used. You know, let's we allow for uh, a certain intentional debate on these matters. In any case, what are the Honorable of Oriata and Akupado? What have they done to manage this economy better? What, what have they really done? Where have you seen that anybody presently is fully satisfied or encouraged by the abysmal performance of this government, short of the propaganda? Look at the 88 hospitals that were promised under the, uh, under the COVID uh, infrastructure. Have you seen one of those hospitals? Currently, they promised an agenda 111 to build additional hospitals. If you couldn't build 88, how do you intend to build 111 hospitals? I was at the University of Ghana Medical Center yesterday, and I think the two people in the media should visit these facilities that President Mahama left behind for the good people of Ghana. Go and see the real interventions into the lives of people that those facilities are being used for. It is the sort of real interventions that we want to see, short of the sloganeering. Have you heard the amounts that have gone to the architects who designed the uh, prototype for the Agenda 111 hospital reveal. No uh, competitive trend with nothing. You understand? When all these things are reduced to basic procurement and benefits to the entity, it leaves a lot to be desired. People want real intervention. People want to see tangible changes. People want to see reforms of a good type. You saw the article that was censored by Ambassador D.C. about how African leaders should sit up. Can you imagine that our president could not even condemn 
in excel to the actions in Guinea. Look at the very name letter that was signed as being from ECOA. It even tried to tell us that the coup had not been successful. You understand? It tells that this is a leader who is out of touch. Who certainly doesn't understand the exigencies of the day in which he lives? You, you, you know what I'm trying to say? We are all Ghanaians. We all live in Ghana. You, you know, I, I, I believe that we must be deliberate. We must be intentional. That the NDC must rise up, step up to the plate. To ensure that we preserve our national democracy. This is the conversation that we should be having. Nobody should actually be killed or maimed or wounded for daring to cast their ballot in a certain direction. And listen here, in 2020, until that uh, press conference where we actually realized and projected we winning the majority in parliament, the attacks were actually at the very minimum. The attacks went to a certain crescendo after they realized that the election was slipping out of their hands. We should not force the hands of our democracy. And we should not continue to deceive and disrespect the same electorate that brought us to power. The same democracy that propelled us to power. We must at any time respect the tenets of our democratic dispensation. Well, let me ask how uh, the... Uh, because already you're attracting a lot of attention here in Accra. So for us, it's something that, that a lot of attention has been drawn to. But for those of you on the tour, how has it been so far? Second day, I believe. You know, this tour was actually intended to express appreciation to the over 6 million Ghanaians and the many others whose ballots were not respected. Because even though they may have cast their ballots or votes for John Dramani Mahama, those votes were not respected or counted as they should have. But on the record, we have the over 6 million who cast their ballots for John Dramani Mahama and the NDC. This was a tour to say thank you and to appreciate them. And of course, to pay special attention to those who lost their lives, those who were wounded and injured, to the chiefs and other key rulers who have actually been uh, dealt with in a certain way for coming out openly to support some policies and uh, proposals that President John Dramani Mahama made in the 2020 election and many others. And you should see the re response. You should see the warm reception. You should listen to the complaints by the good people of Ghana. You know, without any fear of equivocation, a lot has changed in Ghana. When President Mahama argued that he had fixed them so, and that now all we needed was to keep the independent power producers working and power will no longer be a challenge. Look at the insults that we rained on him. You understand? Look at the Atu Abuga and its intervention. When was the last time you heard that people were queuing around town with their gas cylinders? These are basic interventions that go a long way to touch the lives of every Ghanaian. Remember also that the gas was not just to give us gas and our gas cylinders. It was so that it was same, the selling of very, very crucial forests to use for firewood and for charcoal. Lately, as you drive around, you find that every small business, they're using very small and interesting gas cylinders. It is more efficient it is more cost-effective. In the long run, it protects the climate too. So let's not underestimate the power of our democracy. That people indeed have a voice to go out there without fear or favor and in safety to cast their ballots 
for their candidate of choice. The reception has so far been very warm, very receptive. And of course, we express our deep and sincere appreciation to all the people who took the risk to queue and to cast their ballots. They were citizens of Ghana. For those who lost their lives, we express our deep condolences to their families. And we also continue to hope that government will not only investigate, but will show commitment to some restitution being done to those who were men and injured in the course of these actions. But certainly we must all rise up to defend our constitution. And I guess maybe I heard you wrong, but correct me. Did you say that former President Mahama actually visited the home of one of the people who lost their lives? Yes, he was actually, you know, he's actually been in the uh, Techiman and Bono uh, area. So, yes, he visited Sunyani to the family of the young man who lost his life. He called on them. Yes, he did. And I'm sure you heard the general secretary of the NPP saying that the family is in pain and they are mourning and he was actually going there to go in, uh, in Africa. Everybody who loses a family welcomes commiseration, especially for no mean a person than President John Damani Mahama. So I'm sure the family was indeed honored and humbled that President Mahama would knock on their doors and call on them to check on them and find out how they're doing. In any case, he even spoke at length at the radio station and he spoke about the fact that we do not only want to see justice, but we want to see that justice is actually being done. That if justice will be done, it must be seen to be done. You understand? That no matter how slowly the wheels of justice will grind, they must eventually end, and they must end in a way that makes sense to everybody. So justice is not only being done, but must be seen to be done. And that is what he spoke about, and spoke at length about, and spoke passionately about. And I think that this is a matter we must all take very seriously. That matter should not, not only be in court, that investigation should not just be carried out. But when recommendations are made after these investigations, government must be seen to implement the recommendations. What happened to the government's own white paper and the recommendations of the Iowa Commission? So far, who has actually been prosecuted? A same investigation was actually commissioned by government into the matters that happened in Tichiman South. We are still waiting for the outcome. A similar motion was actually put before Parliament. We are waiting for the outcome. A petition is before Shraj. We are waiting for the outcome. So certainly we must start to believe that justice delayed is indeed not justice denied. But in the case of people who are injured, when justice is delayed, it means that it is invariably being denied. You understand? So President Mahama says that if we say that justice is being done, it must also be seen to be done. Why start an investigation and leave it mid-sentence and not lead it to its logical conclusion? So I will invite all the agencies involved to be up and doing like President Mahama is saying, to ensure that justice is indeed being done and it must be seen to be done. That the persons requiring justice should see it. That when matters are put before court, people expect a certain logical conclusion. People expect that these matters will be dealt with in an expedient manner. That the justice should also be seen to be done in timely fashion. And I believe these are the matters that we speak to. What is the point if you issue a writ, if you serve processes, and then the matters are adjourned, uh, you know, sin and die. They are adjourned, you know, without any consequences. You understand? When you institute an investigation into a matter, and it takes forever for the investigation to be completed, you know, when there's a, there's, a, there's a recommendation by a commission of inquiry, and then we do not see that critical parts of those investigations and recommendations are actually being fulfilled. These are all matters that actually chip away at our democracy, and they leave the citizens entirely without any means to actual justice. So we must all be up and do it. And I believe that these calls that are being made by President Mahama are calls that lie in the mouth of every Ghanaian today. And many Ghanaians have been making them. 
Thank you for speaking to us. But which region are you in today? Well, so now today they are continuing the regions actually span the uh, western north, the Bono Apo and the Sunyani and Techiman areas. So they will be largely in the old uh, Bono Apo region for most of the day.